Uh, all right, there we go. For the Dickinson, go right ahead. All right, grace and peace, Pastor, grace and peace, Zion family, grace and peace to all the guests who may be on this line. This evening, we welcome you to Tuesday's night session of Developing Unwavering Faith. Again, it's a privilege and honor to be before you once again to bring forth the word. Again, as, as I always say, I pray all is well with you and your families at this present time. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2, starting with the fourth verse. Will you stand for the reading of God's word? And it reads, but God, starting at verse 4, but God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in our sins, have quickened us together with Christ. By grace are ye saved. And that raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. My brothers and sisters, friends, I'd like to bring word this evening. Now, before I give you that word, I want you to remember back in a few weeks ago, and we've been doing this for a while now, I told you about, I gave you a message about this is only temporary, it's subject to change, and this too will change, something like that. Well, I want to give you a message this evening, and I want you to remember these two words, because this is what you're going to need. And I told you before, about whenever you're going through something, that's the attitude that you need to have. This is this is on. This is temporary. This too will pass, and it's something to change. Something, something to that effect about that title. Well, these two words I want to give you, and you would already have the same attitude uh, when whatever you're dealing with. Again, uh, developing unwavering faith is all about teaching us how to have what develop a attitude towards faith when it comes to God. When it comes to anything that we're dealing with, we need to have a strong attitude that, you know what, God's got this. And I ain't gonna worry about it yet. I may have to go through, but God's got this. So with that being said, I know I can't hear you, but repeat after me, because it's, it's gonna be very important. But God, that's it. That's the title of our message, but God. Uh, in the passage of scripture that I just read to you, it tells us that even though we were dead in our sins, but God, because of his mercy and grace, uh, he still showed his love and kindness towards us. And he did what? He saved us. In other words, in spite of all the fact that we were dead in our sins, mm -hmm, we were dead in our sins before we gave our life to Christ. God still loved us enough to save us from our sins and his wrath. Uh, we were lost and doomed and headed for eternal damnation. But God has raised us up. My brothers and sisters and friends, Paul is telling us, we, before we came to Christ, we were dead in our trespasses and our sins. But because of the grace and mercy of God, God did what? He raised that, he raised us up. Well, I want you to use those same two words when, yes, you're saved. Yes, you're going to heaven. Hallelujah. But you know, as well as I know, between now and the time you close your eyes, you're going to have to be facing with some stuff. You're going to be dealing with some trials and some tribulations. That's not a negative uh, uh, statement or doubt, belief, unbelief statement. That's just the way life works. You know, and you know, the devil's always rearing his ugly head. So we're, we're going, in other words, what I'm trying to say is you're going to be attacked at some point during your lifetime. You're going to go through some challenges. Do I have a witness out there? You can just wave your hand for those I can see. You're going to go through some challenges. Well, I want you to use the same two words. Even in our, when we were dead in our trespasses and our sins for this here, as far as your faith in God, whenever you're dealing with a challenge, but God. No matter what you're facing uh, in your life right now, no matter the various uh, types of challenges, no matter how difficult or how hopeless the situation you are dealing with right now, 
no matter who told you it ain't going to happen. That's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. No matter what the what doors of opportunity and optimism are being slammed shut in your face, all you need to remember mm -hmm, when going through is these two words. But God. Mm -hmm. But God, when the doctor tells you what he tells you, amen? But God, when you're not feeling well. But God, when you mm -hmm, lose your job. Mm -hmm. But God, when your marriage is failing. But God, when you are persecuted and ridiculed. Mm -hmm. But God, when your kids are in trouble. What are we saying when we say, but God? God is in control. God's got this. I know my back is against the wall. I know I'm facing this challenge. I know I'm dealing with this. I know sickness and disease is trying to take over my body. But God, mm -hmm. but God, when your money starts acting funny, mm -hmm. but God, when your back is against the wall. I know the problems that's going on in our government, mm -hmm. but God, I know the problem that's going on with this, this virus that doesn't seem to want to go away, but God. I know the ills of the world, but God, mm -hmm. I know what the doctor may have told you. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, yep. We, we can't escape that. You know, we, we're going to face some, some health challenges every right now and then. But guess what? God, again, what am I saying when I say, but God, we got God on our side. Yes, doctor, I know what you said. I know what you're telling me. Mm -hmm. But doctor, but God. You don't know my God. Yeah, I got it. I appreciate what you're telling me. I'm going to do what you tell me to do. I'm going to go follow all the instructions. But God, or you can even say it another way, but my God. Either way, you need to have a but God whenever you're challenged, faced with these challenges. When you, when you say but God while going through your challenges, it will what? Strengthen you. Mm -hmm. But God will what? Give you encouragement. But God will give you peace. But God will sustain you. But God will keep you. But God will what? Give you reassurance. But God will give you hope. But God will keep your faith in God from wavering. But God will give you faith. But God will give you boldness. But God will give you confidence. But God, no matter what, uh, but God will help you stand, having done all to stand, because in spite of it all, you know that you know that you know knows that you know, without a shadow of a doubt, God's got this, and it is all in his hands, and it is what? In his control. Why? Because of two words. But God, my brothers and family, friends, I know you've heard this testimony many times, uh, many times, especially those who've known me for a while. And, Maybe there's some, some folks on the line who have not heard this testimony. But, but my mom had a but God attitude when the doctors told her I was going to be retarded for the rest of my life. Yes, for those who don't know, as a, as a young child, being normal for about two or three years at the, at the age of three, the doctors diagnosed me as uh, being retarded. I you know, lost all my ability to do whatever I needed to do as far as feeding myself, playing, acting like a normal kid. Uh, my head swelled up two times its size. I couldn't walk anymore. I grunted and I rocked like this. And anyway, all the doctors from New York, from Philly, everywhere she went, all said the same thing. We don't know why this came on you, uh, your son, ma'am, but he's going to be this way for the rest of his life. They even started drawing up papers to have me committed to an institution because they said as I got older, she would not be able to control me. And so they needed she needed to put me away. But my mom had this but God attitude and refused to believe that God was going to let me stay this way and make a long story short. <laughs> she had a, a man of God. My grandfather was a man of God who had a friend who believed in divine healing and laying hands on sick like I, like I do. <laughs> and uh, uh, asked permission for my mom to take me to his house and took me to his house and prayed with me all day brought me back and said, do not take him back to the doctor. Let's see what God's going to do. Well, my brother, sister, family, friends, here's the testimony. I'm, I'm sitting right before you. You know, never had another symptom that was over. Oh, my goodness, I'm 61 now. 
oh, do the math, 58 years ago, <laughs> whatever, but never had a recurring symptom, never had anything that you would know, you would never know it ever happened. It was like it never happened. Why? Because my mom had a but God. Yes, doctor, I know what you're saying, but God. Amen? Amen? I, I had some friends who whose daughter couldn't get pregnant. And, and she went through all this in, in vitro stuff and, and about, she was on her sixth one. They all failed. And she was on her last one. Again, I say last one because for finances purposes, she wasn't going to go through it anymore. She, he asked me to come pray with her. I went to the house, prayed with her and told her, I know what the doctor told you. <laughs> I almost had like a, I almost had like a God telling Abraham moment. I said, but this time in nine months or so, you will, are going to have a child. It's going to work this time. Just trust me. I know what the doctors tell you. I know you're about to give up. I know your husband's about to give up, but don't give up. I'm here for a reason. I'm telling you, I'm laying hands on you. Just believe it. Like a long story short, not only has she had one child, she has had another child since that uh, test, uh, me going to lay hands on her. I'm not taking any credit for it. I'm just telling you what happened because my friend had a but God moment. Amen. I, 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 another friend's mom was about to die of pancreatic cancer. She only had four months to live. He called me and said, man, well, my mom's coming to the area for Thanksgiving and I need you to come pray with her. I said, no problem. I, I'd be glad to do it. Went over to his house. We live in, uh, we live in uh, Harrisville at the time. We live right around the corner. I went to her house, his house, did all the pleasantries. And I said to her, when is your next doctor appointment? She said, when I get home. I said, well, when you get back, they're going to tell you something different. I'm going to lay hands on you. I'm going to claim you healed. And you wait and see when you get back. They're going to tell you something different. That's what I told her. They're going to tell you something different. About a week later, two weeks later, she went home. And, you know, I'm sitting at a restaurant with, with her son and other people. She calls and put me, he put me right on the phone with her. And she, of course, she told me, I said, I got something to tell you. I said, I already know what she's going to tell me. They could not find any cancer. The cancer was completely gone. Why? Because that lady had a but God moment. I, I know I prayed with her. Yes, yes, yes. I, I know I laid hands on her, but I take none of the credit. All the just like Jesus, I gave credit to her faith. I was just the vessel that the Lord used to minister faith to her. But her faith was already strong. You would never know or knew that she was going through cancer. She didn't act like it. She didn't, she wasn't, you would never know looking at her. Well, my brother, sister, fine friends, uh, she had a but God moment. And that the Lord added to her. They couldn't find any more uh, cancer. It was totally gone. But just last year, it came back. I do, I do tell you this. It did come back in a vengeance. And she passed on. The Lord, but the Lord gave her an additional seven years after that time, cancer-free. And she lived to be old, uh, 80, 81, 82 years old. What I'm trying to say, my brother, said, when it comes to God, you got to have what? A but God attitude. Because God is the only one who can change the situation around. I know you're probably getting tired when me telling you about this faith stuff, but listen, there's no other way to live. There's no other attitude to have. You gotta have a faith attitude. You gotta have this. You know what? I heard you. Yes, I know this is going on. Yes, we're dealing with this. Yes, our, our money is active funny. And, and, and yes, there's some problem with the kids right now, but, 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 but God, we know that God can handle it. We gotta, in other words, what I'm trying to say to you is, you got to give every single problem, every situation, no matter how small it is, no matter how large it is, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and no matter what anybody else is saying about it, give it to God. Why? That, isn't that why you're praying to God anyway? Isn't that why you go to God and pray in a way? Because you know he's the only one who can do it. You need to have what? A but God attitude. My brothers and sisters, friends, no matter what you're dealing with, no matter what you've been told, no, what you're, no matter what you're confronted with, again, I say that in prayer. I'm not making lightly of anything anybody's going through. I'm just trying to show you we as Christians need to have what? A but God attitude. Just like you couldn't stop anybody from, from you getting saved. You did it by faith. No matter what anybody else said about it, no matter what any other religion said about it, no matter anybody said you're crazy, that, that Christianity stuff is, is a bunch of malarkey. What did you do? You still stood and you went on here and got saved. Well, it's the same thing when you believe in God for anything else. That same faith that got you saved is the same faith that's going to get you healed and, and get you through whatever else you need to deal with. But you need to have that attitude. But God, let's pray. Our Father God, thank you. 
thank you, Lord, that when we're faced with stuff, we can we we know that we can trust you. We know that no matter what, even though it may be scary, even though it may be uh, we get weary and troublesome, and even though things look daunting at times, and 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 we get all kind of negative news, and and we deal with all kind of negative challenges. Father, we thank you that we know, but but God, because of but God, we know, Lord, that we can relax. We can get, put it into your hands. Help us to do just that, to have and develop this but God attitude, no matter what we're dealing with, no matter what we're going through, that we can trust you. We thank you for your goodness, grace, and mercy. We thank you for what you've done for us before. We thank you for what you're doing for us right now. And we know what you're going to do for us in the future, that we continue to trust you, lean out to our own understanding, acknowledge you in all our ways, and you shall direct our path. Why? Because of the but God factor. You have everything under control, and all we need to do is relax and give it to you, even though we may be going through, even though it's troublesome, even though it's worrisome, even though we have a tendency to wring our hands. But, Father, in the name of Jesus, when it's all said and done, we hand it over to you, whatever the situ situation, situation or issue may be. And I'm asking, Lord, you help all of us to do that, to, to do just that, to develop that faith attitude of, but, God, I know what I was told. I know what I heard. I see the situation, but... God's got this, but God will see me through, but God will give me the comfort, but God will give me strength, but God will make a way out of no way. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Thank you for your grace. Again, I ask you to touch all those who are in the prayer line. Thank you for keeping us in blessings while we're going through this pandemic and anything else we may be going through in our lives. Thank you for sustaining us and keeping us. Thank you for giving us, uh, us another day, which is another day that you have made, and we shall rejoice and be glad, and we thank you, we praise you, we do not take it for granted. It's because of you that we live, move, and have our being. We ask you to touch our pastor, plus all the uh, Zion family, pastor and his family, the Zion family, all those guests who are on the prayer line. I pray that this message has blessed them, has encouraged them, has uplifted them, and given them something to think about and something to, they can uh, use for the, the, the fight against whatever it might try to come against them, that they know that they, they can say, but God in the face of the devil whenever he raises his ugly head. We thank you. We praise you. We give your name all the honor, glory, and praise. And thank you for another time to get into your word and teach your word. I give your name all the honor, glory, and praise for it. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen and amen. God bless you, Zion. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. 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 Amen.